Welcome to episode six, Getting Started with KiCad, version nine. In the previous episode, you assigned the footprints to the symbols and you learned how to make a footprint. In this episode, you get to start laying out your board. To open the PCB editor, you can hit that button on the project manager screen or hit the same green button in the schematic editor. We don't want to design a board that the PCB maker can't make, so I'll show you how to align the board limits in KiCad with the PCB maker specs. At digikey.com, under resources, I'll hit DK Red. It's also linked in the description. I'll hit technical specs at the top. Here it shows that the minimum trace width and minimum space is five mils. The minimum drill size and via size are 8 mils, and the minimum via pad diameter is 16 mils. In the PCB editor, change your dimensions to mils, and open the board setup by hitting the green button at the upper left. Under design rules, select constraints. Change the clearance and track width to 5 mils, the minimum via diameter to 16 mils, and the minimum through hole to eight mils. Now hit OK. Now we're ready to start. Hit the half green update PCB from schematic button and update PCB. Notice the warning at the end. I had you use a footprint for J1, the DC jack that had a third pin, but our symbol only has two. We'll fix that in a bit. Hit close. Click once to drop your footprints. Turn off the front fab layer to clean up the view. See those thin wires? Those are called rat nest lines or air wires. They are there to show you what you told each pin to connect to in the schematic editor. You can turn them off and on with this button and change to curved or straight lines with this button. Double click on J1, hit edit footprint. Surprise, we're back in the footprint editor. Click once on pad three, hit the delete key on your keyboard. If you want to fix your front courtyard and silkscreen layers, you can, but you don't have to. Since it only takes a few clicks, we'll do it. Select and delete these three courtyard lines and select this one to pull it up and fill the gap. Next, I'll select the silkscreen line and pull that up too. Easy. Now hit save. Notice that the asterisk in the upper left disappears, letting you know you've saved it. As the note says at the top, this will only change this copy of the footprint, not the original footprint in the library. If you want to save this for your other projects, hit file and save as after you've created a library for your connector footprints, that is. Close the footprint editor. If you have a second screen, you can have your schematic editor open at the same time. If you click on a symbol there, it will select the correlating footprint in the PCB editor and vice versa. This is called cross probing. Not very useful with such a simple design, but get a few dozen parts or a few hundred and it can really help. If we click on pad two for J1, look at all the information in the lower left. We can see pad two is part of the ground net. Because we don't need to space our footprints out to a specific distance, I like to set the grid as low as it can go for maximum freedom. Move your footprints by hitting M to move or click on it to select and drag with your mouse. You can also move the reference designators the same way. If you don't need to see them once assembled, like for J1 and J2, you can move them inside the footprint like so, or just delete them. Here's a tip I wish I learned a long time ago. If you want to move an item only horizontally, for example, hit M to move 
and then hit a left or right arrow key. Now it's locked in and it can only slide left or right. This also works the same for vertical movement with the up and down arrows. You can hit F to flip a footprint or text to the other side of the board. We'll do that later with images. Notice when you start to move a footprint over another one that it glows pink to warn you it's crossing into another courtyard. If you're still learning how to solder, it's a good idea not to run your parts too close together, but courtyard violations are fine within reason, as long as you're confident in your soldering skills. I wouldn't recommend this for beginners. You can always adjust the courtyard by editing a provided footprint if you want to change it. If you like, you can pause the video to move your footprints to be like this, or do it at the end. Then hit the X key to switch to the tracks or traces tool. When you start a trace, notice that all the pads from the same net light up. To get some practice, pause the video and draw your traces to all the ground connections. To move traces once they are laid, hit D to drag or G to grab. D keeps the angle and G adds a corner. Pause this to try each function and see how they work. Be cautioned that a 45 degree angle is preferred. You can also light up any net by right clicking on a pad or trace, then hit net inspection tools and then highlight net. See the net names on the pads and the traces? This is where you may be glad you took the time in the schematic editor to change the net names. If you want to change the way they look, go to Preferences, and then Preferences, PCB Editor, and Display Options. A feature that came out lately is Attempt Finish. As you're starting a trace, if you hit F, it will attempt to finish it for you. Not a big help with a simple design like this, but it can be a real time saver on big or tightly packed designs. Another plus is that it can help you find a path you hadn't thought of before, a bit like AI for routing traces. Note that it will only try routing a trace on the side you're currently running a trace on. Try it here. Hit X and click on the ground pad for J1 and hit F. Hit the source pin on the MOSFET and hit F. Vias are what we use to make a trace jump from the top layer to the bottom layer. Just hit V as you're drawing a trace and click your mouse to drop a via wherever you want it. To change the width of the trace section or the whole net, click on a segment and hit E to edit just that segment, like this. Or click on a segment and hit U, and it will select more of the segments. Hit U again to select all that are on that net, then hit E to edit all of them at once, like this. Now let's add a few mounting holes for an M3 or three millimeter screw. Hit A to add. The first M3 will work fine. Click to drop it here. Hit Escape to switch back to the Select Item tool. We don't need the reference designator, so hit Delete while over it. No need to pick the same footprint over again. Just click on it and copy and paste it. One of KiCad's tools that I use the most is the Reset Local Coordinates. If you want to be sure you're placing your other mounting hole directly in line with the first, just hit the space bar when you're in the center of the first hole and you can see how far off of zero you might be when you place the second. Now to draw our board edge. Select the edge cuts layer. You can use a number of tools to draw and edit your edge line, but the rectangle is the easiest. Hit the draw rectangle tool. Click and drag to draw your rectangle. Click on one of the lines. Right click and hit Shape Modification and then Fillet Lines. This is what a 3mm radius fillet looks like. 
Let's add some filled zones. This design does not have nets with a lot of connections, but if it did, a copper fill, otherwise known as a copper pour or a flooded zone, would sure help. These are very easy and very useful, especially when there are loads of power and ground connections. This can also offer additional benefits when there are high currents or high frequencies at play. VCC has three connections and our ground net has four. Let's delete the ground connections. Remember, select one segment and then hit U until you have them all highlighted, then hit delete. Select the front copper layer. Now the Draw Filled Zones tool. Click once outside of the edge cuts. You can see that it has the top copper selected. Select ground. Hit OK. Now finish drawing around the edge cuts. Click again and pick the back side and VCC. Then draw another perimeter around the edge cuts. Hit B to bathe it in copper. Notice the rat nest lines disappeared. A quick note, be sure this button is checked or you might go crazy figuring out why nothing happened. For practice, hit Control B to undo the flood or pour and B again to refill it. Select the bottom copper layer to bring that to view and you should see the VCC connections to the pads with blue spokes called thermal reliefs. You likely know that copper transfers heat very well, and these thermal reliefs help when soldering so you don't have to heat up the entire copper flood to get a quality connection. Switch to the top copper and turn off the bottom to see the connections. Remember that the raw PCB starts off with a solid copper layer and we're telling it what to etch away, so using copper flood zones uses less acid. A great feature to use often in the PCB editor is the 3D viewer. Hit Alt-3 or View and then 3D viewer. Notice the 3D model for the power jack isn't showing. Close out of the 3D viewer. Now back in the PCB editor, select the power jack and hit E or double click on the power jack footprint. Hit the 3D models tab at the top. Click on that long address at the top and click on the folder button. They had the WRL file. Let's try the step file instead. Much better, even lines up correctly. Hit okay. Now open the 3D viewer again. Much better. To make your 3D render look like the PCBs from DK Red, double click on the front mask layer, select Define Colors at the top, and change the color to Red 4 with an opacity of 70. Before we move on, that MOSFET package is called a TO92. This footprint has the pads really close at 50 mils or 1.27 millimeters. When hand soldering, it's really easy to short these together at 50 mils, like I did. So this is a perfect opportunity to learn how to use another helpful feature. Select the footprint for Q1 and hit E to edit. We could edit the footprint and move the pads, but this time, let's hit change footprint under the general tab. Then select the little books to the right of the new footprint library ID. Scroll to TO92 hand solder. And hit OK. Hit change and close. You can move it and hit R to rotate the Q1 reference designator if you want. Click to highlight the middle trace. Hit D to drag to the end of the pad. Hit B to flood the filled zones. Perfect. To see what parts will have copper showing, select the front mask layer. Or look at the 3D view, all three. 
This circuit draws almost nothing when waiting for water. I've tried measuring it, so it can run on a simple 9-volt battery for well over a year. But if you plan to use the 12-volt power supply listed, you could add an LED and resistor to be reassured it's plugged in and protecting you. You could just add the LED and resistors here in the PCB editor, but in PCB design, the best practice is to make your changes back in schematic editor and then update your PCB. This keeps your documentation straight, including your bomb. You don't have to follow along unless you want to add the option of an LED, but why not? You can always choose not to place those if you decide to use the 9 volt battery for some of your PCBs. And when ordering from DK Red, you'll be getting at least four copies. Opening schematic editor, copy our VCC in ground over to the side. Copy the R1 resistor symbol and make an R2. Change the value to 6.8K. And the digikey part number will be as follows. Since you copied the symbol, it already has the same footprint and 3D model. Click A to add. To add an LED symbol, let's type in LED and then small. Give it this footprint. Now wire it up. Save the schematic. Hit the green button to open PCB editor. Hit update PCB. Leave these unchecked. Double click on R2 and change the orientation to negative 45 degrees. Move them here. Move the reference designator for both, like so, and create the trace from R2 to the negative pin of the LED. Hit B to flood the zones. Click this to open the design rules checker and hit run DRC. All good. Check the 3D viewer, Alt 3. In the next episode, we're going to add a graphic from an image, create Gerber files so we can order our PCBs, look at them through the Gerber viewer, create our bill of materials, and order the parts. See you soon.